Everybody, welcome. Kurt Elster, the host of the unofficial Shopify podcast and the, what is it, senior consultant at EtherCycle, I think is the, the title you gave, gave yourself. I like that, <laughs> yeah. Senior consultant. Uh, I've been called CEO founder a couple times, though I don't, I don't like the CEO title because I don't have a board to answer to. Um, but I don't, I'm the head Yahoo in charge. <laughs> I did the same thing because I started a few companies in the past. I kept calling myself a CEO, which is like a big lie, right? Like yeah, it doesn't feel right. It has like a giant team and, and, a, and a board and they have a C-suite that, that reports to them. And I'm like, I'm not a CEO. Let's stop calling myself that. So. <laughs> All right. How you doing, Derek? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining me. Let's, um, we're going to do guys to, right now, Kurt and I are just going to kind of spitball and uh, he's going to give his phenomenal conversion rate optimization advice on some of the websites that you have submitted to us uh, prior to this. And if you want to submit your website in chat for Kurt to review, you can do that here. We have the, the first list, but if we do get around to people that are here in chat, we can do that as well. So yeah, I got um, uh, six sites lined up in my browser right now. Perfect. Um, we'll probably, we may have time for, for a few more. So don't, don't hesitate, submit it. Um, might get some, some good free advice out of it. <laughs> Perfect. And we've got a couple additional submissions here. All right, let's get to it. Share your screen. Show me the, the mess. Show me the problems. I, my favorite thing to do is, is, uh, is criticized because <laughs> my website is a mess right now, but it's so much easier to tell other people what's wrong with theirs. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, and so uh, to your point, you said my website's a mess. It's easier to tell people what's wrong with theirs. Yeah. I mean, within, within a day of having built a site, you've, you're already blind. You've got change blindness. You're blind. You can't see the forest through the trees and it's easy. The reason why is simple we all spend the more time on our own websites than literally anyone else in the world now and forever. So you rapidly just lose sight of like minor issues. Um, and you know, we, this industry is so new, no one really knows what they're doing, right? Like how long have, has Shopify been what it is? Five years? I mean, it's, it's nothing, it's so quick. Um, so, it could be very helpful to have someone who is not married to your site like you are go through it and be like, okay, here's the, here are all my, the moments of pause where I'm like, all right, that's a little weird or like that doesn't seem quite right. Um, as well as to compare it against like, okay, here are just standard best practices. Like, you know, if we do the, the big websites, Amazon, Jet, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, whatever, all of those have taught our customers how to shop. So often if we could look to uh, the leaders in your industry and you leverage those, uh, the patterns they use on their website, then when people land on your site, they won't have to figure anything out. They already know how to use the site. So I love that. Thing, that's a, that's ahead. a nice little moment there. I think like taught, they were taught how to shop based on Amazon's experience. Right. And so we, we don't want to reinvent the shopping experience. We want to take, the one that a larger player, we have to admit the larger, definitely the largest, uh, has already made possible for them. And then we replicate that and it makes the experience seamless for the user. Yeah, exactly. Um, and taperedmenswear.com, I opened this one up. This is, this is a good example. Like I landed on the site and the first thing I love about this is they leverage the F pattern. So people read in an F pattern, top to bottom, left to right. And so they've got their logo in that space, this is where my eye's gonna go, no matter where I land on the site, and they have included their tagline on there, menswear for muscle. So immediately, three words, this is so brilliant on their part, three words tell every visitor to the site what they offer and whether or not it's for them. So if I land on the site and I'm a woman, I'm like, okay, it's not for me, or maybe I'm shopping for my man, and I think, oh, okay, I'll check this out. Or menswear for muscle. Well, if I'm not looking for you know nice fitted shirts, again, I roll myself out. The advantage here is so that leaves the focus. <laughs> um, okay, so the first, I love that uh, in, in the top, we've got our, our message up here, free UK shipping. So this common problem uh, or missed opportunity rather, I see a lot of people make, there's no shop now link, right? We could click on this darn thing all day long. It doesn't do anything. 
So adding, um, linking this to, hey, shop our best sellers, you know, something like that, shop now, um, shop new, anything at all is a, a fantastic use of the space to build on what you have here. And I like they've addressed international versus domestic shipping, where we go, if you could ship worldwide, tell people, all right, worldwide, uh, you get free shipping over 100 pounds. That's fantastic. Um, another, and 28-day money-back guarantee, especially in apparel, and even worse, fitted apparel. There's always going to be a fear around, am I going to get the wrong size and what do I do? So you always want to have risk reversals, objection busters. And here they have put, they have busted the two biggest objections in their industry, free shipping, international free shipping, and what's the return rate or how, what happens if it doesn't fit? They've got all of that answered right up here. The only thing that scares me is we've got Instagram in the upper left. Instagram's important for apparel but we've already got, I'm already on the site. I don't need to go back to Instagram and maybe I'm, I'm an Instagram influencer. This thing just serves as a distraction. So anytime I see social icons in the header, I'm going to yell at you. Keep that stuff to the footer. Uh, the, well, Derek, you got anything you want to add? That was exactly what I was going to ask on the Instagram button. I saw it there and I was like, not only, it, it is a distraction. It's probably not, I'd, I'd be interested in knowing what the clicks are on it. It's like in the wrong spot. But like, it shouldn't be there at all because it's kind of, if you get a lot of clicks on it, it's bad. And if you get a few clicks on it, that's also bad. Why is it like, so there's no winning. There's no winning with this thing. <laughs> yeah, so social media icons, just, they, they're not doing you any favors in the header. Yeah. Um, another one. The thank you page, by the way. <laughs> what was that? Perfect for the thank you page, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that is, yeah, order confirmation. Thank you page is a brilliant place to put it. I default to the footer. Um, the other easy opportunity here is we've got home shop about a size guide as our main menu. You can ditch home. It's wasted space because we know everyone at this point, it's like a standard that we know we could click the logo to go back. We can use our back button. Um, shop. Oh my gosh. This literally the smallest link in here is shop because it's the shortest thing. So the most important has been really hidden away here. So I would prefer we break it out. Um, like I want, the, the top exclusively about shopping and then like about us and size guide, those could probably go in a top menu in place of that Instagram. And then our shop, we could break out into, um, all right, well, we only got eight shirts. So this could just be one giant thing that says, I'd get rid of home. I'd say shop uh, tapered fit shirts. Uh, and then, you know, then do size guide um, and about us or FAQ, you know, one of those two. Oh my gosh, we got British GQ quoted these guys. How is that not right up here in this hero image? Like, don't hide your hard work. Shirts expertly designed to highlight your physique. Uh, and then we could put, um, like I might consider doing a pull quote from GQ right in there. And I like that we've got the shop now link. This would be super cool as a video. Um, but I like every, doing a, a video, if you just want any video, we all have smartphones. Anyone can produce a video now. Um, but doing professional video, I can understand is, you know, it's tough. You got to find a producer anyway. Um, so scrolling down, we got tapered menswear, shop the tapered shirt collection. Normally I would say you could do like shop our best sellers trending now, but in this case it's, there's eight products total. So you could say, um, I might say like shop our curated shirt collection, uh, and then add some urgency to it. Like we we see that one sold out, you could say limited quantity as featured at GQ Men's Health. This is so, like, for this group, these two are so important, and it's so hard to get these press mentions that I would almost say, man, maybe we should put that, like, right up under the hero image. Social proof is huge. Oh, and then they spell out, what's a tapered shirt? And then they explain it. That's fantastic. My only suggestion here is you could probably make this thing more legible if you just left align the text. The web is like 90% typography. If you can make it easier to read, all the better. So I'd say if we could just like three bullet points, left a line, just straight down, quick and easy to read. Um, oh, more social proof, I love it. I would just say, let's be mindful of keeping consistent images. If you wanna make your life easy, just, damn, these two guys are ripped, holy shit. So uh, crop them all square and it makes your life easy. It's easy to crop an image square. Oh, see, and then we've got a video here. Yeah, we consider doing the video up at the top as like your hero image. So your hero image is really good. We've got Instagram. I like these. Uh, I like them even better when they're shoppable. Um, 
there's a couple apps that'll do that. So like right now when I click it, it just dumps me into Instagram, which is not the best. You could modify this thing so clicking it won't send them anywhere, but ideally um, there's a couple apps where I click this and it opens and you can have links to the products in that Instagram window. I've got a couple of minor things to Go add ahead. on that. Ta- what is a tapered shirt uh, section? That's kind of like a image section. So when you go down to mobile on this, it gets really tough to read. So definitely yeah. need a minor rework there. Yeah, this theme probably has um, a decent section you could use um, to not have to just do like literal text, image as text. It's never good, not good for SEO. It's just, it, there's no good reason to do it other than like you're trying to get something done quick and dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then which they probably knew. Instagram do. section, I, I think, uh, I always follow the rules of Instagram to do three, it's, it's three wide on Instagram. So it should be three wide here. Um, I don't, we, you can tinker around with how that might work from a design perspective. <laughs> What's that? Uh, no, that was my business partner blowing his nose. Oh. <laughs> Um, the, um, and you might be hearing my dog prance around behind me. He's deciding to go bonkers, uh, which is apparently a real thing, by the way. My wife sent me an article on it. Anyways, back, back to the show. Focus. <laughs> the, uh, the reason I like, I think it's important to go three across is because at some point you might be doing three across images on your Instagram and it would look really um, weird if this was four and that was three. I was going to ask you why the, there's that rule of three, but you're right. That's yeah. The Instagram grid is three across. Okay. Yeah. All right. I did not know that one. I'm going to keep that in mind from now on yep. because yeah. cert- there's a theme setting for this where it just goes, how many images do you want? Like set it to three and then it'll figure out the grid on its own or yeah. six. Six is what you want. Yeah. Sure. Um, this footer is laid out nicely. I love that it's, you know, you're not hiding. Here's our contact info. Um, usually I'll repeat the logo as the first element in here. Generally these footers are five columns. So you could do like logo, um, help and support newsletter and then like this checkout securely with is wasted space because a we know like 2019 everybody knows you, you could pay online with a credit card um, and two like these logos aren't even legible at this point so I would just I'd get rid of this guy um, and let the email offers be the last thing and you could put your social icons in there or do the the contact info I think that that would be a nice touch um, Let me quickly dive into a product page and then we'll move on to another one. I would love, so I like this in this drop down menu that it defaults to choose an option. And the reason is oftentimes in Shopify themes, this will default to a size, um, like small. And then without thinking, and I've done this myself and I do this for a living. You just, you're like, yeah, I like the shirt. Oh, it comes in my size. Add to shopping basket without thinking, without changing the size. So if you have an apparel store and you're dealing with returns and exchanges, this, what they have implemented here is the solution. Um, and then like you could see, oh, look at that. It tells me, yeah, you can't add this. Same deal with the social icons. I would kill these, especially if someone really wants to share this, they can. Um, I see skew in category. I would remove these as well. And then we've got a tab description here. And they have done a good job of displaying the size guide. And then this is wonderful. Need help with sizing. See our size guide. Still not sure. Email us. This is going to be their biggest objection. So they have done fantastic work to break it. Um, And then like are even explaining here, hey, this is what's up. I've even heard of people offering to send a measuring tape to you so that you can size yourself. What do you think about that? I like it because it's clever and it's engaging. Um, but it borrows from like the jewelry industry. If you're buying rings, people will often, um, they'll say, hey, here's a, your, uh, your ring sizer. And they sell them at cost um, or at a loss. And then that way, you know, this is the exact ring size because it's worth it to not be doing those exchanges. And the only thing that's missing here is we've got, well, we, we've got shipping and returns. I would probably rephrase this as like um, returns and exchanges just because we know that's what people's concern is. And then they've got these wonderful, um, wonderful customer reviews. The only thing you could add that's missing from this page, this in stock thing is cool because people want to know like, is my thing going to ship? Um, is you could do to add internal linking and as a safety net to keep, keep people shopping, especially since you've only got those eight core products, you could display like you may also be interested in and display, display related products down here. 
I also feel like these are great reviews, but I need to see, I want to see a image review essentially. I just want to see somebody buy this and how it fits on them. Because my number one concern, like you said, is, is, is it going to fit on me? And we have this, you know, um, you know, what is it? Fantasy reality images that a lot of people do. It's like, here's what I thought it was going to look like. Here's what it actually <laughs> looked like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this here. Size and fit that they've got the model stuff on here. Um, mm, yeah. It might be worthwhile to print that as text on one of these images just to help so people don't miss it. And it really, it is a fantastic size reference. My wife sells t-shirts online. We did a thing where we, we put her dimensions on a felt board and she held the felt board in one of the photos. Uh, all right, if I add to cart, and then we'll move on to the next one. I just want to do like the full experience on at least one of these. I love that on add to cart, it sends me to the cart page. That is fabulous. Um, and they've got this info, have a discount code. Like this could be a common problem. If you're on Shopify Plus, you can hack the order summary to stay open. That will help reduce uh, these issues with people with discount codes. Also use um, Shopify's shareable discount links so that the discount codes get applied automatically for the customer. Um, I love, this is very smart. Spend an extra $25 to qualify for free shipping. We do that in client stores and it, it really does help. Um, oh, and they've got the shipping info in here. That's cool. This looks a little messy. I might ditch this guy. And instead of doing this graphic image, I would just put the word or. So that way, like we've got checkout securely. I would rephrase this as check out uh, with credit card or proceed to check out is the label Amazon uses. And then you say or, and then they go check out with PayPal, check out with Amazon Pay. Otherwise, it's a little confusing as to what the difference is. Um, so if that's an issue for people, I mean, that's really not a big deal. And then if we go check out securely, I am praying this thing is set up correctly. Oh, yes, look at that. We want to make sure our checkout matches the rest of our site. They've got, um, you know, our place order button is the same color. The whole site matches, um, and they've got their logo up here. This is even on, I've seen seven-figure stores where they miss setting up the checkout, and it blows me away every time. But I'm happy to see they got it here. Anything you'd like to add, Derek, before I move on? It's clean on, on that uh, cart page. Maybe you, you talked about removing the Visa MasterCard logos. They're maybe just keeping a little space. It's not a big, big deal, but, um, but it can tend to, you know, you don't want all three options necessarily equally possible. You're kind of, you want to present checkout securely as number one, most likely because I think that'll be the lowest cost to uh, the store typically, I don't know. And then the other two is like sub options, or if you don't have a Visa MasterCard or you prefer this other way, right? So add, it's almost like adding a little bit of friction on purpose uh, to present the main option to them. Yeah. Uh, okay. This site okay. is a beautiful example of, um, of attention grabbing, of a, a thumb stopper. I land on the site, it has this arrest, very arresting uh, looped, uh, autoplay muted looped video. So if you want video to uh, play automatically on every device, that's the trick. It has to be muted um, and then loop it. And it really, like, this is probably only a 15 or 30 second video. It is so dramatic and beautiful um, that you immediately, it communicates to you like, oh man, I need to know, I need to know what's going on here. Um, so when I say like, man, everybody should do video. All you have to do is make a 20 second video. It's not that tough because it like, look how professional amazing that is. And for all we know, this is just like a $300 drone shot or a phone on a skateboard. Like it doesn't have to be hard. And then they go with, you got to make a bold claim. Well, here our bold, um, with your headline here, our bold claim um, is a negative thing where people need to stop it. Over a hundred thousand acres of rainforest are destroyed every single day. Um, we're on a mission to stop this. Shop now, save an acre. Okay, cool. Um, that, like, it, it just, it's so arresting. But anybody could do this. Derek? The, uh, we, I love the background video and the movement of it. We have this small problem with how do we get text overlaying on a video and the nav bar is a little bit lost up there. So the solution there, um, Joe, what we do is add... Like in this case, I'm going to say it's probably okay because when they land on the site, we're really just trying to get them to click this button. Um, but this, 
when we've had this issue with other stores, what we do is like quick CSS modification. We add a really heavy drop shadow to these to make it visible. Um, if the, you can add a transparent background to these guys in CSS uh, or and it's like with a hero image, sometimes what we'll do is just add a gradient to the top of the image. With video, it's a little harder. You gotta, gotta feel confident in Adobe Premiere to do that. Um, but that's, it, 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 to your point, yes. And that's the way around it. Here they've worked, you know, they're lucky. Um, the image is dark and it works uh, and they're able to put, just use it like a really fat font so we can see it. I wish this had, um, the button had a background color just to make it easier to read. Gotcha. In fact, actually, you could, I would say you could ditch this. We're on a mission to stop this and just have this be a bigger button that said, join us, join our mission to stop this. You know, uh, or uh, you could save an acre today, learn more, make it like you focused. Because right now it's we're on a mission. I want to make it more you focused language. And then yeah. down here, it's the same problem. Our mission through our by, what, like I want, we want very you focused language. Like I get that they have this, this altruistic thing they're doing. Um, but you need to, it, it's easy to involve people more. Most sites are written like I, 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 we, 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 we call that IREA. I got too many eyes. Uh, right. So just going through your copy and copy can make such a big difference. It's conversion going through it and just rewriting it. So it's all you focused can uh, really make a big difference. That's what's so funny. You can literally just add a Y to the beginning of our mission and all of a sudden it changes the entire context. It's like a challenge. Yes. Oh my God. That's actually, that's really good, Derek. Yeah. Uh, I always want, I want to make sure every element, especially like at a page like this has a call to action. This image is really good. It's powerful. What, but it, I can't do anything. Not that you could tell I'm like clicking all over this thing. Nothing's happening. Um, so just adding a button here with the next step could help. Um, same deal here, like none of the, I can't click anything in here, just like a little, I wish I could click the images or a little link down here, none of it. But then, okay, great, we've got the whole product embedded here, which is nice. Um, we're adding a little bit of, uh, of scarcity element here, limited stock, 22 people are viewing this. I'm sure there's an app that does this. Um, Given how like serious and austere the rest of the site is, I'm a little worried that the, the palm trees <laughs> and the exclamation point don't quite fit that. Um, but otherwise, this is important. So I would say like just ditch the palm trees and just change the exclamation point to a period. What are your thoughts on scarcity? I, there's some components of scarcity work for me, but if limited stock is there 100% of the time, you know, and this is a brand that's, that's meant to be very, very, you know, trust building with their audience. Yes. Th those this does two, feel a little out of place, doesn't it? It's like, you could, I wonder if there's a different type of scarcity we could add, which is like, you know, you, you need to stop the next acre right now or something like that. Like an acre, an hour, or an acre, a minute is being destroyed or whatever it is. And it's like, you can stop one right now. So it's like going if back to the- If you knew court. what that stat was, it would be- it would not be, it would be easy to create a JavaScript that on the page, like under this thing, that was like, you can help stop deforestation and like X, uh, you know, X acres have been destroyed uh, since you loaded the site. And then it can like, and it's a moving target, a moving number. That wouldn't be tough to write in JavaScript and you, that could be put in the product page. It could be like a permanent counter as part of the header. I love that idea. Oh, you make it a, a message, an announcement bar across the top. Yeah. To really drive home the point. I love anytime we include uh, badges or icons in a product description. This, my guess is like, since this is a single image, it's just stuck in the product description. If you wanted to modify the theme, like you could make this same element a little nicer where you've got like each three of these graphics would be their own image and this would be actual text. Uh, anytime you do um, testimonials, they are dramatically more powerful when it includes an image. So that's fantastic. These images look like they might be stock photos attached to these, which weirds me out. Either, like, honestly, they're just too polished. Get, get lousier images to make it more realistic. That is hilarious, but yeah. very true. <laughs> um, and anytime we see, like when I see three testimonials lined up, 
I love that they're all the same length, like just make them the same line length. But I would just, I would bold a key phrase in each one. Just pick one phrase that you know is important to your, your prospective customers and bold it. This is wonderful, but again, no, it needs call to action. This is very cool. Um, and then follow the journey, I assume. Yeah, and this is Instagram again. And then we've got our, our footer. The footer looks a little sparse. And we've got about and contact us. That's good. I would ditch the payment thing. Um, I would have a newsletter sign up down here. And then, uh, so we've got info and helpful links. I would break that up a little bit. So I'd say, I would break it into, um, let's say, okay, we got shop here. Hmm. I do it, um, uh, company over, uh, call one company, and then that could have like our catalog, our mission about us, and then another that said uh, info and policies, and then it would just, it would be FAQ, shipping, terms of service, privacy policy, and then no search. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is there a lot to search here? It might not be a very search-oriented site. I, yeah, I don't think so. It doesn't it's seem just that way. Product or... Oh, we found a, a bug. If you click shop, it goes to pages slash shop and there's nothing on it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, and we've got spin to win. This site is so serious. Spin to win does not feel right. It's the same problem as that scarcity thing. So this like shop, this should just, this should go to collection slash all. Just give me all your products. Um, we've got accessories. Okay. We've got these three. Uh, so we'll go to this bracelet. I wonder if we can add something right below the price on how many, uh, yeah, like how much acreage each one is saving. So, oh, that would be a really clever customization. So yes. instead of the price, because that's what we really care about is what we're saving. Yes, uh, that's very clever. You're on fire today. I, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think the reviews are missing on the homepage. So I got 32 reviews. If I go back to the homepage and then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah, the review stars don't appear here. So that's an easy, easy one to fix. It's just that it, it when it, on installation, it missed this element. So uh, anything to add, Derek? The only thing is that with a site like this and trust in like, you know, you, you need to make sure that they really believe that this money is going to go where you say it's going to go. And so, yeah, the our mission and about us and showing the faces of the people behind it and, uh, and, and getting out there and showing the, the acres saved, is that's gotta be part of the brand. And, and maybe it is, I, we haven't seen everything, but we've, right. we've gotta believe it. It never tells us what they're doing. Yeah, how, how does this money go to? At least like yeah. on the homepage of the product pages, it doesn't. Here it says they're a leader. Aha, there we go. Rainforest Trust partners with. So, you know, like this page is so nice. There's a lot of this content could live on the homepage. There's no reason the homepage can't be longer. And this page is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Note those partners. Maybe there should be an our partner section dedicating it to that because we believe if they see the partners that we've made, they're more likely to purchase. It's about us page is okay. Um, but honestly, like there's not a ton here. I would just combine the content from about us into our mission and just ditch the about us page then because the about our mission is so much stronger and add the faces of the people behind it. This cannot be an yeah. anonymous brand. We have, yeah. We don't know anyone um, that's behind it. Also, I noticed it does not appear to be a charity. Yeah. It, it looks like a for profit or they said social uh, social enterprise. So it can be for profit, but a certain percentage of their money should be going to the social good. So then again, the question is what percentage goes towards social good? And then on our mission, 100% these are stock photos. Like this would be a great shot to show the time you went to the damn rainforest. <laughs> like include those photos here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, Solstice proudly supports. Is this the first time we've heard Solstice mentioned? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's All right, once we face. dove deep, now we've got questions. So that's what you <laughs> want to stop your customers from having. All right, let's jump to the next one. A natural lab. So uh, right away in this one, this newsletter thing popped open. I left it open intentionally because it's not compelling at all. Join our newsletter. Why? 
And then down here, sign up today for free. Oh, thank God, they don't charge for their newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and be the first to get notified on new updates. All right. So it, it's, a, it's an arresting image. Like, it certainly it caught my attention. Um, the, we just need a, we need a better reason for me to sign up. Like, sign up for 10% off your first order. Never, uh, like, sign up to be the first to know about our weekly flash sales. Give me any incentive at all to join your newsletter. And this might be like a picture of the of the founder of the store. And so I, maybe it's like more like follow her mission or her journey, or it's like, you know, join me. It's like kind of bring bring it, be honest about what the photo is about, essentially. Speak to Yeah, it. good point. Um, we do that as an example on the contract shop. And I'm hoping the pop-up fires. Like you could make it, I love personal branding is very powerful. I love personal branding. Um, Naturally, of course, the pop-up doesn't fire. There it goes. So we load it with like, this is the actual owner of the store and it's, hi, I'm Christina and I'm the lawyer behind this. Let's be newsletter friends so you could tell me what makes you a weirdo too. Sign up. Like this is such a clever way to start engaging people. And I would imagine most of the brands we're talking about have like a single, um, are, uh, a solo founder or a very small team. And that's an absolute advantage for you and that you can connect directly with your customers. So leverage that advantage. Yeah, I love this one. So th that, that is just quirky and honest. I love it. <laughs> uh, natural lab. So I noticed it looks like the fave icon is missing. Yeah, all right. So in the upper left in the tab, there's no fave icon. It's a really minor nitpicky thing, but I would add it. Um, the site feels extremely boutique-y. Like this is very much a, an apothecary type thing. So often these brands, um, minimalism is important to them. So it's got a lot of white space. It breathes well. And some recommendations we've made like just wouldn't fit the brand aesthetic. Um, so natural lab. Like I think you could still add a tagline here. Um, we've got this beautiful image with no context whatsoever. So I would consider adding a headline to it and a call to action. Um, where? Okay, we've got drop downs. I, if the theme supports it, I would love it if these drop downs were mega menus, meaning they've got, you know, top, bottom, dress, jewelry bags. Each of these could have a photo that is exemplary of that collection with a mega menu. That's a nice touch um, here. So people know what I'm talking about briefly yeah, i've seen this before and i, I do yeah. think it's important because you want to highlight the best seller of maybe each each item yeah. in that category so that they're, so they're already the getting site. an idea of what they're going to buy and it's like oh shop all wallets boom and it opens we can see a photo of wallets bags and packs we can see a photo of what we're looking at is much more impactful than if this were just like a four four element link list um okay so scrolling down like featured collection again the site wants to be wants to be very sparse, um, but I might give, like featured collection is probably just the default text. I want to give it some context. I like, you know, uh, trending now would probably work really well for this or in stock bestsellers. Um, that could work. And it's, I mean, it, it's cool stuff. And what they've done that's wonderful is have really consistent images. Like look how nice the grid is when the images are all cropped and sized the same. And then we've got this element going for as our yeah the only one that does that breaks here is this this image like for this really stark imagery to work we need um, we need to have really solid images honestly I might just skip doing a carousel here and like this is just such an arresting image that fits with the rest of the brand I might just say like do just this image and then finish it with like a newsletter sign up what do you think Derek. Are those images clickable? I'm trying to... Yeah. Yeah, they click through to the product. Okay. okay. It's a beautiful dress. I, depending on volume, you can, you can test to see which one is, uh, is best. But typically, the, the rule of conversion rate optimization, as you know, is that uh, that movement kills conversion. So there, there could be a concern there. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of image carousels, for sure. I think they just bloat load time. Um, all right, landing on the product page really lovely and here they've got advantage tax included and shipping calculator checkout i probably ditched the shipping calculator to check out um but the tax included is a nice touch so people know they don't have to like okay the price is closer to the actual price um 
So as I mentioned on that, that menswear site with the, the fitted shirts under sizes, if you have an issue with returns and exchanges, you may want to um, have this customized so it defaults to select a size. And then we've got our add to cart and our dynamic checkout buttons. Yes, bless you for enabling dynamic checkout buttons. And here we've got um, description, fabric, uh, look after me, that's cute. Maiden. Maiden is blank. Probably want to fix that. I'm guessing this might be like Metafields or something. Um, fit runs true to size. Even if that's the case, still still do a size guide or tell us what size um, what size and uh, figure is, is the model so that I've got at least some reference point and context. And uh, the rest of the site, we did such an amazing job of cropping all the images to the same size. Here we've got, okay, these three are from the same set, so they're the same size. This one's a little funky. Um, I would just try and get this one to the same dimensions as these. And then we've, we keep that nice grid. Um, I would consider adding product reviews, though I'm guessing your products are, are pretty limited, um, like limited quantity, limited edition, um, short run, and then they don't get restocked. That could be problematic for uh, doing reviews. So if that's the worry, I understand. Um, and then we've got share, tweet, pin it. I would ditch these. I don't think they add anything. Um, what you may consider adding is you've got this nice layout is at the end, just say questions, contact us um, and give them a way to, to get in touch with you. In case, because like, all right, they're going to spend $350, 350 pounds on a dress. Let's at least give them the opportunity to ask, ask some questions about it so we know what their objections are and we have the chance to bust them. That's where that on-site chat comes in handy on the bottom right corner. <laughs> yeah, just doing live chat. And then you can have like questions, contact us. And it's a link that makes the live chat pop open. Um, this cart, lovely. And here it's got the UFocus language, your cart. Um, though in the top here, we've got a bag. So you could say like your shopping bag. If you want, if I want to be really nitpicky. Um, down here, we've got continue shopping, update, check out. The problem is continue shopping and update are way bigger than checkout. So I would relay, the easy fix here is relabel checkout, proceed to checkout or pay with credit card um, to just make that button much bigger. Because right now PayPal and Google Pay are the things that really stand out. Mr. Derek. Yeah, well, do, do we need those to be those kind of colors, the yellow and the black? Can we make them consistent with our brand, but still make These it guys? clear that, that you can go there? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a nightmare. It's really yeah. hard. <laughs> to try and mess with these. So it's a good suggestion, but God help you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because they want you to use their images and it's a special thing. Yeah. Yes, and I'm, I'm, these could also um, be in, like side, in, side loaded by Shopify, which makes it harder to get to. Um, Sorry, my, my dog is deciding that he must come up on my lap right now. Well, yeah, he doesn't care. He's here to party. <laughs> <He's not. laughs> You've got something to do and let's pet him. Um, if these continue shopping and update buttons were just text links, like just restyle this button to remove the border and then we'd have even more attention given to checkout, which I will click now. And let's see if they styled the checkout. Come on, I'm hoping you do. It'll load. There we go, yes. So they've got their logo in here. Um, this color, I think, matches the site, though the checkout button was green. So you may consider changing this to the, the green as the same color as the checkout. Um, and if you want, uh, one hack I do is I'll relabel, um, I'll edit, let in, when you customize the theme in Shopify, you click edit languages. I'll often rename payment method to secure payment method. Um, and shipping method, if you do free, you could do free shipping method. In this case, though, you know, I got I to gotta pay for international. Anything to add? Maybe this is a good time to talk about the benefits or costs of enabling Shopify pay. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> um, here, let's see if it works. Uh, let's see which email address do I? Secret password one, two, three, four. Did it work? No. Or is it on continue? I don't remember. I forget when it fires, but um, maybe it's when you put in your phone number. I don't want to type in my phone number though. Are you in incognito right now? No, I'm not. Uh, but anyway, Shopify Pay is, is very cool and then it, it pops open um, as soon as it recognizes my phone number or email address. I forget what, if it needs to be both or not, but it pops open a, a thing that says, hey, 
it, uh, if I've used it on any other store, it goes, enter the, the code. We just texted you, and it's a six-digit code, and then it autofills my address and payment info and makes my life much easier. Um, so there's never a reason to not enable Shopify Pay. It's so slick. Yeah, it's taking from Amazon's payment method, but it basically using it across the Shopify network. I think it's, uh, it's a must-use optimization. Oh, it's so good. I love it when a store has it enabled because I know, all right, I don't have to type any of my info in. It's way more likely I buy as opposed to abandon checkout when you remove, when you give me that much less time to second guess myself. Yeah, and when I'm on my phone, it's the worst experience. So anything I can do to not have to go, you know, fumble my credit card around. Yeah, no one wants to mess with that. <laughs> and it's 2019. Why should they have to? <laughs> exactly. Uh all right, we got this site, Office Rock, your ultimate online office supplier. The thing that is going to drive, with, so we've got uh, an uphill battle here. It's a reseller site, so they, they're not making their own goods. They're reselling other people's stuff, so you could buy the same things anywhere, and they've got a huge catalog. What will make a site like this succeed is if it is simply easier to find, not just easier to shop, but easier to find exactly what you're looking for faster than any other site. So the name of the game here, the competitive advantage is going to be convenience. Um, so like, right, these menus are not on hover. So right now I gotta click them to pop open this menu. Ideally on hover, it pops open um, so I can get to the menu faster. I wish we could break these down a little more. They're a little tough. Um, one solution may be to go through, your, go through your catalog, determine the worst selling products and remove those categories to simplify things, uh, let's try uh, toner. So, oh, there it goes, okay. I would put way more attention on this search box that's up here. Like on, I would add it as an element on this homepage, just huge under here saying like shop now or search now, you know, search the store and include, um, I would go in your Shopify analytics, assuming this is on Shopify, it's not. I would go in your analytics and look for uh, what search queries people are using, figure out the top five search queries, and you could do like example searches and then hot link those. Um, this has got search by name, product category. Okay, that's good. I would just make this thing as obvious as possible. That's the solution of big catalogs is focus on, on search and findability for products. Yeah, and I think uh, this is, that's one of my weaknesses. I don't really know large product catalogs like this very well and, and how to best sell them. But oh, it's it, tough. It, it's, it says Office Supplies Dubai in the top left corner. I'm starting to think that this is a regionalized uh, site. Hey, Jay, we're going to push you to uh, attendee for a second. We'll be ready with you. In what up, Jay? <laughs> uh, he can't hear us yet, but we'll, we'll push him to attendee for now. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me close. We'll bring him back in. Okay. This site, here we go. I, I complained about the newsletter on a different site. This one, look at that. Hello, beautiful. So really, I look very catchy on brand. It's got this cool glitter graphic effect. So it certainly got my attention. 10% off. Join our newsletter today. Great. Now I know what I'm getting. If I'm even like the slightest bit considering making a purchase here, I'm going to sign up because I want that 10% off. So this is a great example of... Um, uh, a newsletter pop up. There so might be a little too much in the in the in the I fine did. print down there. I noticed that. Look at that thing. Um, like, do we really need all this? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, you hereby agree to. Put, whoa, that's a little frightening. Um, I would just like don't use the lawyer speak. Don't use the legalese. Just write it in in human English. Um, will be friendlier and. Uh, I would, I would simplify it. I mean, just like clicking join now. I agree to receive emails from, from Purely um, and, Pure Lay and uh, like here's the link to our privacy policy. Yeah, exactly. New subscribers only, terms and conditions. We yeah. Go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Just simplify it. Yeah. Um, That's what oh, happens when you get lawyers involved, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's silly. Um, so again, uh, so this is very definitely turbo theme. I recognize it immediately, right? That's pretty sure it's turbo theme. Um, in the upper left, oh no, social icons. I would get rid of those and we could make that, you know, questions, contact us. Um, 
our announcement bar again doesn't I can't click it it doesn't go anywhere so I'd add a call to action up there especially since spring sale thirty percent off and we've got the same thing here with shop now just do that up here um, this image it's beautiful fantastic like it really I I could see the brand um, immediately I think it works uh, and it leaves the text legible and then we've got oh a mega menu. Fantastic. Look at that. Accessories. That's so great. And we've got the left side is exclusive. This All of these links exclusively for shopping. And then on this side, we've got the non-shopping stuff. That's what is so brilliant about having the split menus in Turbo. And that's how they also give you another one for top menu um, up here. That's great. This is confusing. Trend styles from social. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> like, Design in Hawaii is cool. Highest quality materials is a little vague. Trend styles from social. I have no idea what that means. Maybe uh, their customer knows and we don't, but yeah. Yeah, it could be a, yeah, just that I'm a 36-year-old white guy from the Midwest, so I don't know. Um, popular products. Again, like, okay, I like that we gave it some context. It's a little vague. I would use, uh, I, I love trending now. I think it's brilliant. Um, these products are forced into a carousel. I'm willing to bet there's a theme option to show them in a grid. The grid works way better. This is a natural thing. Scrolling, going and like finding this little hidden button and then clicking through is not natural. You'll get better results if you just let them scroll through your stuff. Um, they've got fantastic images and make great use of them. This, is a, this thing is wonderful. I would assume that these are like that this uh, two by two grid and that these menu collections are based on how things sell. Um, the only thing that's confusing is it says watches. It is the last item, but then watches is the thing we feature here. So I would just look at your, and then popular products, we got watches again. So like, just look at what your, I would sort all of this stuff by the things that people are most likely to buy. So look at analytics, optimize. I think. Yes. Yeah. Your customers are telling you how to organize it. So follow that. Um, this is, oh, Wonderful social proof, 291,000 followers accounting, join the club, follow us. I would move this to the bottom of the page above the footer. Um, this is great. We're making use of our, uh, of our influencers with profiles. That's very clever. Do it and must have. Cool. Oh, we got this video. Again, I love like video backgrounds. I think they're professional and engaging. Um, and this really speaks to like what the brand is about. I'd probably put this higher up the page. Ooh. And in the first one, I said, man, I wish we had a shoppable Instagram widget. This is a shoppable Instagram widget. So like these are all from Instagram. I could click shop now. It pops this, the photo open and then, oh, one, this is the product. Isn't that cool? And the, you can see the widget here is 460 is the name of the app. This, that is awesome. That, yeah. that is exactly, yeah. So that's the modification that the other couple of uh, sites needed to make, I think. Yeah. And then um, we've got this thing, money back guarantee, these objection busters, great. Easy returns worldwide and money back guarantee. That's super cool. Like you could use that. Um, I would put those up here as, as some of your, your info. Um, receive the latest news and events from Purely HQ. And I'd probably like, this would be a great opportunity to say, and 10% off your first order. And then you could have them subscribe here. And this footer is that, uh, slightly hard to read, but still very pretty. This is a, a nice site. What happens when we dive into, where does this thing go? Loads up our collection page with a collection hero image. Um, looks great. Blah. All right, that should not happen. I should, I should get hit with the pop-up twice. Sale, new, sale, new. I'm a little worried about, we got too many badges. It's not a big deal. Limit, limit pop-up frequency is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, Abalone. We're low on time, by the way. Oh, all right. Well, we got our bundle here. Um, we've got add to bag. Like, this thing looks good. I just wish this description defaulted open. I don't think there's a big advantage, like, to hiding this info. Um, and that's one of the downsides to these accordion menus. Uh, anything to add before I just whip through this last one real quick? I think we got to skip the last oh, one because I want right. to make sure we can plug Kurt, <laughs> sadly. But um, I always love these website teardowns, Kurt. It's, it's so much fun. And 
I love seeing the products that people are selling, the success that they're having, and then those quick win feedbacks that we can give that can just, you know, make it that much better. Absolutely. So tell everybody here where they can find out more about you uh, and what you're up to as well. Sure. So I'm, I'm best known for hosting the unofficial Shopify podcast. If you want to check that out uh, next month, we, we're at uh, 950,000 downloads now, which means next month we'll hit a million. Hooray. And if you uh, want to see what I'm up to, check out KurtElster.com. Join my newsletter. That's my real email address. If you reply to it with a thoughtful question, I will send you a thoughtful answer. Perfect, Kurt. Thank you so much again for, for doing another website teardown with me. I, yeah, I love these things. And uh, we'll be sure to send people over to the site. By the way, I, I, I'm a l- avid listener of the unofficial Shopify podcast. There are a lot of e-commerce podcasts out there. And this is, I, I think it's number one rated, but it's definitely my personal favorite. Not, and I'm not just sucking up, I promise. <laughs> well, thank, I appreciate it.